Welcome to everybody. We are at the 2023 KTM A90 Adventure International Media Launch. My name is Giacomo Zappoli and I'm the Product Marketing Manager for the Travel and Off-Road segment. I want to ask you two things, guys. What is adventure riding for you? Isn't it just strapping your helmet on, pointing at the mountain that you have seen, like maybe coming over here, pointing your GPS on as well, and then start to ride. You're going up the hill, the tarmac road is very twisty, maybe you use all the nice horsepower that you have down there, and then you arrive at the end of the asphalt road and the gravel one starts. And you're like, should I start, should I go there, or should I just come back from where I came from? And here is where I ask you the second thing. Do you dare to adventure? the new KTM 890 Adventure. Here it is, guys. 2023 KTM 890 Adventure. The most off-road travel capable bike. We have it in two colors. Black over here, orange around here. You may have seen it upstairs as well. First of all, let's chat about one thing. The bike is compact, it's powerful, and it's lightweight. It's one of the most sporty bike in the market. And we have a lot of data to go through around this bike as well. Starting from the far right, you will see 1500 kilometers. Some of you may have heard about it. We recently introduced the demo mode with the A90 Adventure R back a couple of months ago. Going through it, we have now 200 millimeters suspension travel, followed by 320 millimeters front brake disc. You get to stop this bike as well. One of the most important things for a travel bike, the wheels. 21 inch size for on the front, 18 inch on the back. Upright, four. Four are the riding modes. We will go through those later on. A lot to talk about this one. 15,000 kilometers. And we are talking about the service interval. This engine doesn't need like so much service as many others may need in the same uh, category. 840 to 860 millimeters. This is the seat height. You cover both shorter guys and taller guys as well. And last but not least, the engine, the heart of this bike. 890 cc, 105 horsepower, 100 newton meters of torque. Going back to where we start from, I told you guys I want to ask you two things, and I will ask you now a third one. What does it make this bike such a dynamic and travel off-road bike? To answer this question though, I cannot be alone on stage. We need to go technical, we need to go into details, and to do that, I want to invite on stage the product manager for the adventure segment in KTM, Joachim Sauer. Please, Joachim, come on board. Buonasera. Ciao, Joachim. Hello, everybody. So, to start with, we start with sporty character. Well, let's talk about the heart of our vehicle, which is standing next to us. We are talking about the proven and famous LC8C engine. What does LC8 stand for? Liquid cooled eight valves. It's a parallel twin with a ignition gap of 75 degree. It's known to be the most performant and the sportiest engine within the segment up to 900cc and there is no doubt. Do you know what C is standing for? 
it means compact and it's definitely the smallest, the lightest, the sportiest, as I said, engine uh, in the segment. And this is also what we need to make a sporty and dynamic vehicle in total. And uh, looking at the bike, the engine is definitely compact and indeed I can barely see it. Well, as I said, we wanted to make a, a super sporty and lightweight bike. We are talking about 200 kilogram without fuel, but due to the fact that we managed to have a concept which is based on the fuel tank design, we made it to give a much lighter and, and dy more dynamic feeling than the, just the number of 200 kilogram uh, means. Well. There were lots of discussions when we started that project of this latest model. Discussions were around the fuel tank and especially when it comes to appearance, not everybody was happy with the appearance. But there are two reasons why we kept this concept like we have it here. The first one is we wanted to keep the ergonomics super slim and very similar to an off-road bike. And I tell you one thing, when making such a project, there is always standing a 450 rally bike next to it, which inspires our designers and uh, where we can get input and ideas. Ergonomics is the one thing, but the second important thing for the dynamic and sporty character is the distribution of the fuel. We have 20 liters in this fuel tank and the majority of the, the fuel is down here. This brings down the center of gravity and this is one key for the dynamic and agile character of the vehicle. And this is what we wanted to keep. And uh, talking about what we wanted to keep, we also need to talk about what are the tires and what we have down there. Of course. There was also no discussion keeping the 21 18 inch tires uh, or wheels. Same as every enduro bike, same as the 450 rally bike and which is characteristic for an off-road capable uh, travel bike and also tires more off-road and last but not least you are not just in the off-road. Many times you do a nice ride maybe fully packed with luggage and maybe even with a passenger in the back and if you are on a, t on a twisty mountain road of course, you also need to trust in your brakes. So we have a double disc brake, 320 millimeters, which is super performant when it comes to the heavy load. So, so far we talk mostly about what we kept, what has been the heritage of this bike, brought at the beginning in 2019 with the 790, developed with the second generation with the A90. But now looking at this bike, we definitely have something updated and there is a lot to talk about. Well, um, as I said in the beginning, there have been talks about the appearance of the predecessor bike. We on purpose did that isolated mask in the, on the 790, 890 first generation, but of course we saw that the market was asking for an even better adventure bike look. So from looking from the outside, we now have that large spoiler bringing the connection between the front mask and the fuel tank. This, by the way, is, is very similar to a design as you see it on the latest rally generation and also on the latest motocross generation. So it's also one family look. But it's just, this is just the, the outer part of the appearance. If you look below this, this spoiler, uh, you see a much more stronger, uh, more rigid design below the, the plastics, giving more stability to the front end. So we have two forged aluminum massive brackets, but nevertheless super lightweight, which gives so much more stability now on the front. So you can really put the largest Garmin navigation system on the top and uh, there will be no issue if you hit the worst off-road sections. But in addition, we also wanted to improve the, the, the aerodynamics. We wanted to protect the rider much better. So the design of this spoiler area, it keeps away the wind from the rider. And if you look at this windshield, you see a much steeper one. Again, if we had the 450 standing next to us, you would see uh, the similarity to the 450 rally. And the similarities with the rally are definitely foreseen from an outside look. But also when you get to ride the bike, I mean, this is uh, all the time what KTM has in mind. 
keeping this rally enduro off-road heritage that we always foresee. Talking about when you sit on the saddle, there is also something different compared to the previous model. We have been always like wanted to sit on the bike and look further and have something which reminds us that we are in the 21st century, that we have something new. And we talk about... We talk about the TFT, but also when I sit, maybe let's come back quickly to the windshield. When sitting on the bike, one thing which is also very unique on the market is this nice little window here. It's, it's good if the, the rider in front you give you a, gives you a big uh, muddy splash, could happen tomorrow. So on the fast road you still can have a look through that window. No choking, no. The goal of this little hole up there is we wanted to reduce the buffeting when it comes to the high speed on the road. And this is something we achieved very well. Coming back to the new look from this side, we have a, a new TFT uh, instrument in our cockpit. It's the latest generation made by Continental, 5 inch, and I really love this instrument so much. And I'm pretty sure that also you will like it, because now it's so much easier to, to navigate in the menus. If you change from right mode to right mode, it's just a quick look down there and you know where you are. You don't need to look for the word street, rain, off-road rally. You immediately can see the tunes and you know you are in the rally mode. And this makes my life and probably also yours so much easier. And it's so much easier, guys, that like instead of having to read like that small number, you can just focus on the road. You can just focus on your travel adventure. Imagine you're just riding, you get to see like uh, the small range uh, left on your fuel tank. Simply like the uh, pictograms will just change color. Same for the battery. Imagine the battery is low, you will definitely see for that. When you go riding, also you are off-road, you just want to focus on the road. So the slip adjuster will clearly be foreseen and on the TFT and will be much easier to understand what kind of uh, adju adjustment you have at the moment. Last but not least, this is kind of what you might consider like a gimmick, but uh, our developers really take in consideration the user experience once we go through the dashboard. And I'm talking about the language selection. I'm Italian, I ride, get to ride a lot of bikes from the factory, so many times the bike is in German, so I need to go and scroll through quickly through the riding modes. I much prefer having my own language. As I said, it might be a gimmick, but maybe tomorrow you guys will appreciate it much more. And to not go away from what we see around here, I want to deep dive in what we call the demo mode. Many of you guys have seen it, as I mentioned before, with the latest uh, KTM A90 Adventurer launched uh, a couple of weeks ago. What is it? On the first 1500 kilometers out of the dealer floor, you get activated all the software packages coming optional with this bike. And we're talking about Rally Mode, MSR, Quick Shifter Plus and Cruise Control. What does it mean? Simply, every single rider or customer will have the opportunity to test all of our features with this bike before coming to any decision of purchasing one package or another. Well, there have been already quite a lot of discussions in, in, in some forum, I could see uh, back and forth discussions. You should consider one thing. Offering all these features in the mid-class segment this is no, not a standard and having feature like a rally mode and even cruise control this is something which is not on every bike you will not find it but I think also a customer does not have an idea how much effort it means making a rally mode. How many hours our engineers have to spend on a dyno on the road in the desert to really test out and prove uh, this system. And I think it's more than fair that we also want to get some, some money for such an extra. But many guys on when, when they purchase such a bike they would never consider such a rally mode to be interesting for them without testing it. And therefore, I think it's a super cool feature. It's a, a big benefit for the customer to experience such a ride mode or the quick shifter or the cruise control and then decide, yes, I want to have it or not. Anyway, after the 1500 kilometers, the customer will have the opportunity to either go back to his dealer and purchase the package that he likes. For example, he likes the kick shifter, the classic pump between the third and fourth gear, or maybe he likes the rally mode. And talking about the rally mode, we deep dive now in the modes available. Well, for me, a request for the new generation was, you know, I'm an, an old, an old, great off-road freak and I, 
I really like to go, go off-road and when changing from street into off-road in the past I always had to adjust my ABS separately and this was pain and therefore from the beginning I was pushing we need to make that's much much simpler and now finally we have it when changing from street into off-road or rally you also activate the off-road ABS and that's a cool thing off-road ABS means you can lock the rear wheel you can slide into the corner and this makes the life for an off-road guy like me so much safer uh, before I sometimes forgot to do that and everybody knows what happens if you want to slide into a, a corner and the ABS is still activated. And talking about off-road mode or rally mode, uh, we mentioned, we just mentioned off-road ABS. ABS is not just deactivated on the rear, we also have a particular feature for the front. We all think about, okay, this day I feel like uh, the best rally rider on the planet. I don't need the front ABS, I can just tackle uh, the terrain, first corner, up on, the, uh, up on the front rail, bam, on the ground. It happened to me pretty often. Thankfully, we had off-road ABS over here. When talking about that off-road ABS, uh, do you remember that there was um, that guy from New Zealand, how was that name again? Um, um, Chris, Chris, um, Chris, Chris Birch, Birch, Birch was Birch, his Birch, name. Yeah, yeah well, um, this guy, he, I had some talks with Chris and there is no doubt Chris, from the beginning, he said, Yoki, that off-road ABS, it works so great. I never had any need to disengage the, the, the front wheel ABS. And sometimes tomorrow, you will face, there are some corners which will be really tight and surprising for you guys uh, on, the, on the gravel and on the dirt. And we, again, we can have, I would, would like to appreciate, I would appreciate to have a talk again tomorrow about the function of the front ABS. Um, I think there will be no issue and no doubt that this is supportive. No one, not even the best off-road rider, wants to have a sliding front wheel. Mm -mm, that doesn't make sense. And talking about tomorrow, you guys will have to, let's say, follow us because we will be tour guides. But when we think about the travel guys around here, they tend to use either their phone or their GPS. Talking about their phone, we have the possibility of purchasing a connectivity unit which allows what we call internally and uh, to the guys KTM turn-by-turn. Uh, -turn. The turn-by-turn -turn allows you to have uh, an indication of what's coming next and you will have the um, clearly seen on the TFT. Additionally, compared to the predecessor, we add a couple more features and we call it now turn-by-turn -turn plus. What does it allow you? We are talking about having a favorite destination and allows you to skip waypoints in your uh, map. And additionally, when your girlfriend or your wife calls you, you have also 10 favorite uh, um, contacts that you can reach out immediately from your phone. This is pretty important when we're talking about the travel guys. They don't have so much time to stop, pull out their phone and just tackle that. And especially talking about that, you want to charge your phone as well. So around the dashboard, you, we got you covered. We have a USB port, for the freaks like me with the Jeep and with the, just the phone. And I still like to have my big Garmin in front of me and this is charged by the 12 volt uh, connection and so every side will be covered. We will definitely discover it tomorrow. Uh, you will be around with your GPS. So. And I will also be, be around with our uh, KTM Connect app. So everybody who is interested to see how that function works on the bike, uh, I think nearly every tour guide should, should have this connection. So every tour guide bike is uh, fitted with the connectivity unit and so we can demonstrate it. Well, I think we've wrapped it up a lot compared to what the predecessor looked like, what we brought new to the bike. So I just want to thank you, Yoki. You will be a tour guide tomorrow. You will see him around. Thank you. Now, guys, I want to deep dive a bit more technical, let's say. So talking about the finishing touches of this bike. And to do so, we need someone else who's been overseeing the 790 project at the very beginning. He's been seeing like how the project developed and he's maybe foreseeing what is for the future. And for this reason, I want to call on stage Andreas Gurdorf. Welcome, Andy. Hi. Hi. Well, Andy, let's start from suspension. The rear travel we decided for after long testing and development, there's 200 millimeters front and rear on this bike. So 
on an adventure bike, um, there comes a lot together for a motorcycle. Um, if you want to go off-road, what we always like at KDM, you want to have more wheel travel, uh, you like to have a dedicated uh, ground clearance. But we also like to go sporty on-road, so that for you prefer a low center of gravity, uh, to have a nimble bike, to have a good feeling in the twisties, to flick around there. And um, also unique on this bike, especially in the Adventure Class segment, is a very accessible low seat height. And that sums up for us in the end um, in these 200 millimeters. Which definitely make this bike one of the best compromise between off-road and uh, tarmac uh, riding. Talking about what we improved and what we changed from the predecessor, we are not going far away from the front forks now. On this bike, we developed, uh, or we decided for the new front fork. It's a WP 43 mm adjustable front fork. You can adjust the compression on the left side and the rebound on the right side, which makes it a split system. And of course, we also adapted the shock in the setting to keep the balance of the bike and to cope with the new tires. Um, yeah, to just have everything covered to sporty, twisty on-road, uh, sporty off-road. Um, you can adjust the bike to yourself um, if you ride alone, if you ride with a pillion, fully packed. You can just you know, know what you need, you can do with that. And I've also heard that you guys have been testing a lot the previous bike and you wanted to change something regarding the settings. Like getting the bike maybe more comfortable or more travel oriented compared to the previous one? Yeah, I mean the previous one was uh, pretty sporty um, regarding the, the comfort and uh, yeah, well, I think we made a really good balance now between sporty, um, firm, sturdy, suspension, um, but also giving you the comfort tomorrow in uh, terms of uh, off-road riding or long distance riding, so yeah, it's pretty much long testing. So tomorrow guys, I really encourage you to tweak your bike to your needs. We have a lot of features that makes the bike tailored to your needs. And to go back into this detail, I want to talk about with you regarding the seat. The seat, uh, we reworked the seat. So we, the target was to keep the, the ergonomic of the bike. Uh, the target was to uh, give you more comfort to the rider for long days in the saddle, to, for tenacious riding. Um, therefore, we reshaped it, um, give him a 10 millimeters more foam height. And um, yeah, so now we have 840 in the low position and 860 in the high position, which makes, uh, makes it, I think, very unique in that adventure class segment. Well, Andy, now I need to put the cap of the journalist here. I'm gonna do your work, guys, first. So I will ask you, I remember from the 2022 uh, A90 Adventure we had 830 millimeters high, so now we changed it. That's technically correct, so we added 10 millimeters more form, so we added 10 millimeters of seat height or we compromised it. But in the end, uh, we have a new foam structure, we have a new uh, foam stiffness, so it squeezes down when you sit on the bike, so you don't mention any difference there. So it just feels better, uh, feels Nice, feels correctly, feels still sporty. I like the sporty seats a bit more than the sofas. <laughs> and yeah, just feel it tomorrow. So there will be no complaints, I'm pretty sure. So tomorrow we will be swapping a lot around between uh, tarmac section and off-road section. So in the off-road, I believe most of us guys ride standing up, but on the tarmac, you will definitely have the chance to test uh, the seating. Talking instead about the off-road, I mentioned it before. Sometimes you think you're a pro, but sometimes the reality comes into play and you might crash. Nobody will crash tomorrow, of course. And, uh, but if you're out there and it happens to you, um, your bike should be able to move on uh, without uh, yeah, being destroyed or leaves you somewhere in the wilderness. So therefore, um, we reworked uh, the protection, the engine protection. I think we had a pretty good engine protection on the predecessor, but uh, at KDM we always want to become better, to, to develop. And that for um, we now also on the heritage line of the rally bikes, um, we made a really sturdy um, aluminum protection with a, which is wrapping around the lower part of the tank and keeps the periphery uh, protected and added some really um, robust plastic parts on that too. All right, so we got covered from the off-road topic. And the only thing we are missing right now is when we swap in between tarmac and off-road, we have tires to consider. Exactly, yeah. So uh, from the predecessor to now, we wanted to uh, raise a little bit more the capability off-road, but we didn't want to compromise too much the on-road manners. So still, it's a sporty bike on-road. You can 
We have really fun in the twisty mountain sections. You can have fun off-road. It's pretty nice off-road tires. So we had uh, during this presentation here, we had also a lot of rain coming up and uh, muddy sections. And for this tire, it's pretty, pretty well. Uh, he does pretty well. So in the end, it's a nice balance between uh, long distance riding, which they need comfort, sporty mountains, uh, riding twisty roads, off-road riding. So tomorrow we have all that covered. And for that, you will see that the tire performs pretty well. Well, and from this side, guys, I think we pretty much covered all the technical updates and all the um, channel of developing of the bike. So for this one, I just want to thank you, Andy. You will be one of the tour guides and you will definitely see him tomorrow. When I mentioned the channel, guys, I refer to the development of the bike. But as soon as we start the project of the development of one bike, we have uh, other two channels starting. And one is related to all the accessories that comes with the bike. We need to make the bike tailored to every needs of every guy out there. Talking about that, we have 150 technical accessories that we call KTM power parts, which are showcased partially on this bike. Talking about the front, in this case, we launched recently the new factory triple clamps. These triple clamps have the same characteristics as we get inspiration from the off-road world, so with stiffer triple clamps and lighter. Talking about the rear, you always want to either travel with the bike, so get hard panniers, or maybe you want to go with softer ones. And on the other end, if you are really one of those guys that like to listen to his bike, you might want to tweak the sound of it. So we get you covered with the Remus exhaust, or an Akrapovic one. Last but not least, I said, guys, this bike is tailor-made for you. So for this reason, you also have available uh, risers, just simply if you are a tall guy that prefers to ride a bit higher, you have the possibility of that, or you are one of those shorter guys that prefer to touch the ground a bit better, so you have a lowering kit of 25 millimeters, bringing it down a lot compared to the standard one. So talking about the other channels, we have to go to the other side. Here's where the guys also get you covered. Like we also develop gear for ourselves and we get to test it like pretty often. This gear is one of the most ventilated gear we get around here. And it's a gear which is suitable both for winter and summer. The guys have developed one very cool feature and it's called the YK Quick Burst Zippers. So tomorrow imagine like we guys run with this one. It gets pretty hot at some point. Maybe it's a section where it's a bit more tricky. You simply up here, give it a nice pull, open it up and off you go. So there are no compromise between off-road and tarmac sections. When we talk about travel though, uh, we have uh, someone who has been traveling a lot, put into the test gear, put into the test the bike. He got the opportunity a couple of years ago first to travel from Mattingofen all the way down to Greece where we did the first A90 adventure launch. Then he kept traveling with this bike. And so I wanted to challenge him again by collecting this bike in Mattingofen and traveling all the way down now to Portugal. And to do that, I want to invite him to the stage. His name is Paolo Cattaneo, so please come on board. Ciao Paolo. Thank you, Giacomo. Ciao. So Paolo, I heard the ride was a bit rough at the beginning, let's say. Yeah, it wasn't the warmest. So I got the chance to take the bike from Mattingofen uh, and the bike was still under the embargo, so I had to sneak out of the country. Well, you guys, journalists and photographers, you didn't manage to get the shot, so we were lucky this time. Yeah, so the first part, uh, um, I went through Germany. And uh, because I went through Germany, I had to test, uh, I, got, I got to test the bike on the Autobahn, which um, allows you to speed up to any speed, uh, really. And um, you didn't, right? Or... Yeah, of course, the bike uh, goes really fast and um, up to 200 k's an hour. Uh, but the, the cruise control allows you to go up to 160, so you can just basically cruise uh, up to 160. I think uh, one of the best characteristics of the, the, this new model is the, the absence of vibration, probably due to the tires and uh, the windshield and the new aerodynamics, uh, they keep the bike really stable, even at higher speeds. So after Germany, you, well, passed through Switzerland probably, so pretty chill ride, right? and then you enter France, it became a bit more twisty, and then finally you eat the Pyrenees. Yes, still under the rain, so I got rained on for like 2,000 Ks, uh, but uh, the windshield again uh, was, uh, allows me to be well sheltered uh, from the elements and uh, the Terra suit was actually kept me uh, dry. Uh, after France, uh, uh, still raining, but I got into Spain and this uh, beautiful national park uh, called Picos de Europa, which starts the um, 
the climb up to the mountains and uh, so I did a bit of off-road in that section uh, in wet conditions and then uh, after the climbing on the top of the mountain I came back down on twisty roads uh, on tarmac so um, I had to test the bike on the beautiful dry tarmac uh, finally and uh, yeah it was beautiful uh, adjusting the suspension is actually um, a big plus with the new model. So in total you did I think 3,000 kilometers more or less, yeah, exactly. but that adds up to how many kilometers you have done with the previous one? Yeah, overall with the previous uh, 890 Adventure model I did the 50,000 Ks between uh, Austria, Italy, Greece, uh, I know Greece there's a guy here that knows me very well, and uh, also Australia, so uh, pretty much overall 50,000 Ks, which is uh, 27,000 miles. Roughly. That's a pretty impressive number. You could probably be in Andy's team, being one of the R&D developer and tester as well, probably. And you also did a lot of kilometers back in July uh, when we did the World Adventure Week. By the way, guys, uh, for the first time, we wanted to invite someone which is not part of the, let's say, magazine journalism uh, kind of section. These guys managed to win uh, one exclusive spot to our international media launch. I highly invite you to have a chat with them later on to discover what was the World Adventure Week back in July that we proposed to them. So for this one, I think we've wrapped it up. Paolo will be around tomorrow as well, so if you have any kind of interest between how the bike, previous bike was, how the new one is, and uh, how rainy it was during the trip, you can just reach out to him. So thank you very much, Paolo. Thank you very much. See you later. So guys, we are coming to an end. And to come to an end, I want to leave you with three takeaways. The first one is the bike is engineered to ride. We had, a, I think, extensive chat with both Andy and Yoki regarding how the bike is being developed from the very beginning with the 790 all the way through the A90 with the upgraded engine. And now, right here, with the new, all the new updates that we've gone through. The character, though, didn't change. It's still a sporty bike. You will definitely experience it tomorrow. We're gonna have some very nice twisty road and some flat out section also on the off-road seats. And last but not least, is adventure ready. All the tweaks that has been made have been made considering what the bike is, was meant to be, like to travel around the world. And regarding that, guys, last question. Are you ready to leave your comfort zone?